What's up everybody? Welcome back to F It Let's Create. I hope you guys are doing awesome. Today's episode is gonna cover the basics of what I think are important in an everyday at home tool bag. Now, I'm a unique case in, in the sense that I have this tool bag, which I call my go bag. This has all of the basic need to have things that I want when I'm just gonna grab something from, grab it from the, the shop and head into the house or go to a friend's house to help them with something. Oh, there are some things that I don't keep in this bag that I keep in my other toolboxes. Things that I use less often, things that uh, I may really never need at all, but there's like that one random time that I do. Uh, so this is really just the tried and true go-to things that I think everybody should have in their tool bag or small toolbox at home. So much of my motivation with this channel is to show the everyday person, the person that's not you know, familiar with working in the trades or doing a lot of DIY things yet, but helping them understand what's good to have and, and kind of how to set that up so it works best for you. So today, I'm, I'm simply just gonna show you guys what I keep in my go bag. I'm not gonna get into the uh, specific comparisons of some tools to others, some brands to others. That's gonna be future videos. But today, I'm just gonna show you guys, this is what I got. Uh, this changes from time to time, but most of these tools I've had for quite some time. Um, I actually put this bag together when my wife and I bought this house. We moved from an apartment to this house. It's important to note, I actually use an exact replica of this bag when I'm doing electric out in the field. Um, on my dad's van, we have a, a bag exactly like this. It's my bag. I carry everything that's in this and actually a little bit more uh, so that I don't have to constantly be running out uh, to the van to get something that uh, a little bit more specialized. So I set this up to match almost exactly how my work bag is so that it's, it's basically muscle memory. I Everything is in, in just about the same exact spot. It's easy for me to find and that's a really nice way if you are somebody that happens to be getting into trades or working in trades and you have a, a bag or a box set up um, for, for the jobs and you wanna do something for at home, it makes a lot of sense and it makes it really easy if you set it up to match. That way, there's, real, there's no difference. It's whether you're on a job or whether you're at home or whether you're at a friend's, you just know exactly where everything's at and you know exactly what you have and what you don't have. So, let me jump into this. So, these are crucial must-haves. If you're gonna own a home, if you're going to be somebody who wants to do things themselves, put together uh, furniture you buy, or make stuff yourself, fix things around the apartment or the house, do things for friends and family, you need to have some basic tools. So first off, probably the most basic thing that everybody knows, one of the most basic things, is a tape measure. This is a Milwaukee tape measure. I am a huge Milwaukee fan. You guys are gonna learn that uh, in videos to come. My dad and I both are massive Milwaukee fans. This is a 16 foot Milwaukee tape measure. Super basic. This one happens to have a magnetic tip. Uh, if you do not know how to uh, read a tape measure, I'm gonna post a video uh, how, uh, following, following up this, how to read a tape measure. I don't ever want any of you guys going out in the world again and saying you don't know how to read uh, a tape measure and that this is you know three and four little lines. So we're gonna figure that out together and I'm gonna show you guys easy ways to know uh, exactly what you're looking at. But this is just a basic uh, 16 foot tape measure. There is no uh, metrics on this. I don't measure anything in metrics. Uh, if I needed to, I would just you convert it uh, manually um, after the fact, but that lives right on the the, uh, the tape measure clip on the bag, and that's just an absolute. You just can't do anything. You can't hang pictures. You can't make stuff. You can't uh, figure out the spacing for your furniture, anything like that, if you don't have a tape measure. Next, an another very basic thing is a level. This is called a torpedo level. This is a must-have. 
Now I have much bigger levels than this that are hanging upstairs, uh, but this fits in my bag. This is perfect for uh, identifying if a picture's even when it's hanging on the wall, or maybe you just hung a cabinet, uh, or maybe to see if your countertop's level, or if the ground's level, um, any work surface, uh, pretty much any surface that you could be manipulating that can be moved left to right, forwards and backwards, up and down. Um, a combination of a tape measure and a torpedo level is gonna help you achieve as a perfect of the square and level as you can get. So this is really important. These items, they don't have to be the brands that I have. I think this one is, I think this might be a Craftsman. Uh, like I said, I have a lot of Milwaukee and Craftsman stuff in this bag. Uh, but there's cheaper brands out there. There's more expensive things out there. Uh, it just really depends on you know what you want to spend. But they all will do the job for the most part. Um, and you can even find starter kits that have basics like uh, tape measures and torpedoes and kind of other basic tools like that to get going. Next, next, get that in there. Whoa. Is the first set of pliers. These are called side cutters. Um, or linesman, linesman pliers. Uh, these are a must have, especially if you're doing any electrical work. So in future videos, I'll show you guys this, but these are what I would use to twist wires together, to twist wire nuts on, to make any sort of joining of two or more wires. Um, I also can cut wire with these. So whether or not that's Romex, which is a, the typical wire that you would find in your home, uh, I can I can cut that with this. I can twist the ends together, um, and these are just the, these are just the must have. So these are again very basic. There's millions of brands of them. Uh, I always recommend buying something quality. Uh, so these linesman pliers, or also called side cutters, um, are really important, especially if you intend to do any uh, electrical stuff for yourself. Uh, you know, replacing a plug, you're gonna need to curl the ends. These are perfect for that. Twisting wires together, twisting wire nuts together, cutting off excess wire. So these are a must have. These bad boys uh, are often called groove joint pliers. Um, I just typically call them adjustable pliers. Uh, my, that's just what my dad and I call them. If we need something, we'll just be like, hey, can you, can you grab the, the uh, adjustable pliers? Uh, the, this is super handy uh, if you are doing anything where there's going to be a pipe involved, something circular that you're going to need to grab onto, maybe you're working on a faucet, um, anything like that. Uh, these are going to be really important. These are also great. Uh, you can use these to just kind of pinch hold an item. So maybe you're working on, on something that you kind of need to hold an edge of it in place while you mess, mess with it. Um, these are perfect for that. Now, the important thing to note uh, with these is that the teeth on these um, will mar a surface. So you don't want to go clamping on to a finished uh, faucet or a, you know, a nice finished exposed uh, pipe or leg to a to a chair or, or just anything like that. You don't want to go grabbing onto them and 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 wrenching on it because you will mar up and damage the surface. So these are really really great. They make little slip covers for the edge edges that are kind of like silicone that will protect the surface. That you can still grab it and twist it, uh, but it won't it won't mar things up. So that's something to think about. Uh, you can also if you're trying to be you know, super quick about it, you can wrap some painter's tape uh, around them individually uh, and that, that'll give you a little bit of protection. So it's just one of those things to, to really take note of. Uh, these are best used for unfinished type of products um, you know, when possible. So big thing to think about. Next to that, needle nose pliers. These are an absolutely crucial thing to have around. Uh, the, the beauty of these is, as the name suggests, the, the uh, head here comes to a, a fine point. It does not give you a lot of grabbing surface area at the end here, but that's, the, that's really the, the point is these are gonna get you into a, a smaller, more condensed space uh, where these bigger, wider 
pliers just aren't going to get into. Um, I actually love to use these uh, to break out the little tabs in plug and switch boxes on the job. Um, I think these are perfect. I pop it and then I can actually stick it in there and grab them and like and twist them off. And this is my preferred way to do it. Uh, and you don't destroy any other part of the box. Um, so these are must have. Most of them typically have a little threaded section further down uh, that you can get around a, a, a kind of a nut or a bolt if you if you need to. Uh, this is not what I would do if I was messing around with with nuts and bolts. Like it's, it's certainly if you're in a pinch. But and then it also has a uh, a cut a cutting edge in here, so you can cut uh, wires with it. Uh, you can cut some string, things like that. So again, these are not what I would use if I was doing a lot of cutting, and these are certainly not what I would use if I was doing a lot of grabbing and twisting, um, unless I'm in a very tight space and I need to just get a little a little small surface area pinpoint uh, grab on it, and you know be able to rotate it around like that. So that's these bad boys. After that, we've got uh, our basic slip joint pliers. Um, these are similar in concept to the diagonal joint pliers. Um, slip joint pliers, they basically have two, a little slide, so in this setting, the two uh, sides are touching at the top. Uh, these are great, they've got different groovings for grabbing around like a nut or a bolt um, or a pipe of some sort, some sort of cylindrical uh, you know, product. Um, again, these will scratch the products up. So if you're, if you're, not, if you're using a finished product, a finished faucet or you know, something decorative you uh, or you know I've, I've, I've had to use these to tighten up uh, little nuts on like an outside light fixture before I, I always need to put something protective I actually have little red slip covers in my work bag um, so that I can grab things and not scratch them up and, and take the paint and finish off of them so it's really important to note but if you need to grab onto something and you need to, you need to you know wrench your, wrench away at it and, and, and can press on it uh, this is a, an a, a must have go to after that of the pliers these are diagonal cut pliers also known as dykes these are my go-to uh, when I'm doing electric if I'm if I'm doing a lot of cutting or I'm doing a lot of cutting within a uh, electrical box uh, the, these this pair of pliers comes to a, this this slight rounded point here you can see the difference it's not nearly as broad as say the side cutters the other massive difference is is that the diagonal cutters the blade comes all the way up to the tip the side cutters you've got a handful of inches before of of, of really threaded uh, i'm sorry uh knurled teeth if you will before you get to the blade so if you need to insert these in the into say an electrical box and snip a wire or snip a rope uh, these are the absolute best to, uh, if you're if you're stripping wires and you need to snip the jacket off of it or if you buy a product and there's like a twist tie on it, like holding it in the package, you can just take these and snip right onto it. Um, these are absolutely crucial and very, very effective uh, and, and, a, and a must have if you're gonna do electric or if you just wanna have an easy way of cutting open packages or cutting fishing, fishing string or any kind of rope, um, these do a great job. From there, we get into the basic must have screwdrivers. So if you don't know, and it's okay if you don't, there are two standard common screwdrivers that everyone should have. You've got the flathead. Typically, uh, the top will be marked with a single line. It's very easy to identify a flathead. You've got your, your, your very simple pointed tip here. And they, they come in all different sizes, but uh, it's just simply a single slot. It'll, it slides into a single slot, uh, and this is a flathead screwdriver. Other than that, there is the basic Phillips head screwdriver. That is typically marked with a plus sign, because that is what the head looks like. It looks like a plus sign. 
Uh, these two are massively common. If you're doing DIY stuff, this is or or working construction or in anything, this is what you will come across 90% of the time. Uh, these are must-haves. I recommend having multiple sizes because different screws and fasteners have different size slots for the flathead and different size of, of Phillips heads. So uh, these are a couple of my smaller ones. I also have uh, bigger ones. Um, so it's just really important. Not the uh, screwdrivers are not one size fit all. So you have to have a diverse selection to be able to accomplish what you need to um, in that moment. So that I have so many screwdrivers in here, I don't need to go through all that. But what I will note is there is another specialty one that is going to be uh, important to have if you are going to work uh, with electrical stuff for sure. Uh, and that is the square head. Um, this one is marked with a square on the top. These are Milwaukee, so they mark them really nice on the top. So when they're in your bag, you can see exactly what it is. That makes things way easier. Uh, this is very common inside of electrical panels. So, uh, you know, the panel where your circuit breaker, your fuses, the screws holding the cover to the panel are almost always square heads. The screws inside the panel for the breakers and for the, the ground bars and the neutral bars are, are almost always a combination square head, flat head. Square head's a lot nicer compared to um, using just a flat head because a flat head uh, has a tendency to want to slip and, and, and move around a little bit more than this is going to. An important note, just like flat heads and Phillips, these come in different sizes. So you can't just buy one and expect it to fit everything. You can't expect it to fit the, the screws on the outside of the panel and the screws on the inside of the panel and any other square head application you come across. So I have a couple different sizes and you just need to, to know that going into things. A must have if you're going to do electrical work is to have some sort of wire strippers. The pair that I have are super old school. You cannot get these anymore really. Uh, I actually need to redo the uh, rubberized grips on them, uh, which I'll do in a different video. That'd be a fun project. But uh, these are old school. My dad's had these pretty much his whole career. Um, he bought a bunch of them when he noticed that they were starting to disappear. And um, I have a pair here and I have a pair uh, in the van. And uh, this is my go-to. Now, there are a whole new line and type and design of wire strippers that you can find at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, they have built in grooves for all kinds of different types of wires, uh, which makes it nice. So you, you need to rely a little bit less on your learned pressure and technique of stripping. Um, and so it's, it's a little bit more uh, kind of you know, mess up proof, if you will. Now, I'm always a big advocate for being able to, you know, really learn what it takes to do things correct. And, but the, there are tools out nowadays that really make things easier. So that's an excellent choice. Um, I don't have any of those. I've only ever used these. These are my preferred, uh, but maybe in a future video, I'll, I'll get a pair of uh, something else and we'll do a little comparison and see, see, what, see what, what, what we think. Um, again, super important must-haves if you're going to do electric work. This is a basic uh, voltage tester. Some guys call it a sniffer. This is from the, the company Fluke. Basically, you got this button here. It's, you're going to see this red light flashing. What this allows me to do is I can walk up to any uh, type of fixture, wire, um, a plug, uh, switch, anything like that, and I can touch this to the hot side, right, the electrified side of that item, and if it rings red and, and it, it makes a, a constant beeping noise, that tells me that it has power, which means it could shock me, and which also means that it's working, generally speaking. So um, this is just a really quick way of 
safety checking and making sure that I'm not gonna cut a wire that's on and at arc and mess up my pliers and electrocute me. Um, so this is, this is a must have, absolute must have. If you're going to tackle any sort of electrical stuff at home, on a job, anywhere, these are not expensive and they make your life so much easier and there's, they make it so much safer. With that is a plug-in tester. Uh, this is actually a, G a GFCI outlet tester as well. What this allows me to do is you can, if you can kind of see it's, it's gonna be hard because the lettering's so small. I can plug this into an outlet, a basic 120 outlet. Uh, it can be a 15 amp or 20 amp circuit. And this is gonna help me identify if there's anything wrong with the wiring of that plug. So it's gonna tell me if it, there's an open ground, which means the ground wire, and we'll, we'll get more into all that stuff in the future, but if the ground wire is not attached properly to the plug, um, or perhaps it's damaged somewhere down the line and it's, it's not connecting back, uh, an open neutral, same deal, if the neutral is not properly on the plug or it may have been damaged or cut in the wall or something and it's gonna register. Um, uh, it, and then it's gonna go into things like an open hot, a hot ground reversed, a hot neutral reversed, and then it's gonna tell me if it's correct. Now, I know when I do something, if something's correct. This, though, allows me to do a couple things. This, I can walk right up, much like with this, uh, I can plug this right into a plug and it's gonna light up for me and it's gonna tell me first and foremost if it's on at all. If any of these lights light up, even if it's telling me something's incorrect, that alerts me to the breakers on and there is electric there. So I need to be cautious. Additionally, this is gonna help me identify if something's wrong before I even take the plug out. Say there's an issue in a home um, or in your home and you're, you're able to go through and start checking plugs and find, oh, this plug has an open ground or this has this, so it helps you narrow down your search and, hello, Chris is here. I'm shooting a video. Hello. Say hello. This is Chris. Hello. I'm almost done. Okay. You can, you can go inside. <laughs> the, so exciting, she's coming up for dinner. The beauty of this is it's going to allow me to identify things super quick. It's going to allow me to find if it's on and uh, you know, allow me to really start to narrow things down. The other important piece uh, that this allows me to do is I can plug this in. It's got a little button here. I can plug this into a GFI, which is the plug in your kitchen or your bathroom or your garage often that has the buttons and often trips. And I think we've all encountered that. Uh, this, this GFI trips and some other plugs go off and it can be rather aggravating. Um, this allows me to test trip a GFI or it allows me to test trip a plug that's attached to a GFI. So I can plug this into a plug that is attached to a GFI down the line and when I press this button, it's gonna send a little surge that's gonna trip the breaker, I'm sorry, the GFI and that's gonna tell me that it's operating properly. Um, and that's very important. So anytime we do a new home or anything like that, at the very end, before the, we're done with the house, I'll go through, uh, I have a different one on the actual job, but I go through with one of these and I will test every plug. I'll test to make sure they're all wired correctly. Things happen, sometimes wires get cut or you know, I'm human, things can happen, a screw might not have been as tight as it needed to be and a wire popped off, things happen. So this is gonna tell me that. And uh, it's gonna tell me that's working in general and then it's gonna allow me to test all of my plugs and, G and, and uh, that are connected to a GFI and the GFIs. So this is gonna make, allow me to make sure before inspection that things are safe and that's really important. Now for if you're doing DIY stuff, that's still, this is exactly why you would use it. Now you might not be doing things that require inspections and things like that, but you still need to be able to identify, is it on, is it correct, um, and you need to be able to test your GFIs and stuff like that if you're gonna be messing with them. So super important and again, not expensive. You can typically buy these together and uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. Uh, let's see, what else? Super important, a box cutter. This is a box cutter I've had for a long time. Um, this is a Craftsman one. 
Uh, this is a replaceable blade box cutter. All box cutters uh, are replaceable blade, but they make different kinds. This one's folding. They make retractable. They also make fixed blades. So to me, uh, foldings are the nicest because I can slip it in my pocket. Um, I'm, the blade's not exposed unless I'm using it, so it's a lot safer. I don't have to worry about breaking the blade off or cutting myself when I'm not using it. Um, and swapping the blades out super easy. These are massively common. It doesn't matter if you're opening a box, cutting um, some tape, stripping a, a electrical wire, um, like the jacket off an ele electrical wire, uh, trimming some drywall, uh, maybe somebody painted around a plug or switch plate and it's kind of adhered to the wall. You can take this and kind of trim around it and that way you don't pull and tear the paint or the wallpaper off that surrounds it. So these are massively important. These are a must have. These can clip right into your pocket, clip right into your bag. Uh, and I mean, this should absolutely be one of the first things that anybody, anybody has. Uh, from there, I always keep a beater uh, a screwdriver when I was younger my dad just had basically an old screwdriver that he just called his beater and it was just what you used when you needed to have kind of a fine point thing and use a hammer and you need to like just beat on something um, what school is Milwaukee is and I'm sure other companies but we have a Milwaukee one uh, has actually came out with this dedicated beater um, it has a slotted end almost like a, a flathead uh, it's hardened steel and it's got this capped end here so it's literally designed for the head of a hammer to smash on and that's super um, awesome and this has really been fantastic to have it, get, it, get, it gets used you know when it needs to get used so that's really important Next to that is a basic drywall saw. Uh, these are not expensive and these are really, really useful if you're gonna be doing any sort of drywall work for, uh, at, at home or you know, for a friend or whatever it may be. Um, you, can, you, you can use this to literally cut drywall, uh, to cut maybe a hole out for a box or a, a piece of pipe that has to come through before you put a new board up. Maybe there's a leak in the wall and you're gonna have to cut the old drywall out uh, this is what you're going to want to use. Um, it's, it's a serrated blade. It's very sharp, uh, but very, very cheap, very easy to use, um, and is really just a must have. Now, there's other options in the world that, are, that can be much more expensive. Things like using a multi tool uh, to cut drywall is a really clean but kind of messy way to do it, but it's really clean and can be quick. Um, but this is really a fantastic option. Um, and uh, it definitely a must have if you think you're gonna be playing with any sort of drywall repair at home. Uh, I keep a six in one painter's tool in here. Um, basically, it's got a little scraper's edge. It's got this fine point edge that allows me to get into a crevice. I can kind of wrap a uh, like a towel and get in a crevice and, and maybe clean up a paint line or something like that. Um, it's just super basic. It has other uh, other kind of built-in uses that I, I don't really use it for. Um, it's just a nice little scraper or pinpoint edge um, for, for some cleanup and things like that. Um, so super useful. If you're messing with painting at all, definitely recommend having one of these. Um, after that, guys, a must-have is a Sharpie and a must-have is a pencil. Now, this is really important. Some items or products or situations will call will call for different things if i'm working in a newly framed home uh where it's all just bare wood um or maybe you're working in your garage and it's bare wood or whatever the situation may be a sharpie is perfect that that was getting covered up you can make marks you can draw right whatever you need to do it's going to be very visible um and it's going to be covered up so you're not going to have to worry about this damaging a finished surface that being said, if you are working with finished surfaces, you need to use a pencil. You need to be very mindful of how hard you're pressing on these finished surfaces and how dark you're making your marks on the finished surfaces. So a Sharpie is never the answer on a finished surface. I can't think of one time or reason I would use a Sharpie on a finished product. It doesn't make sense because it's supposed to be permanent. A pencil, on the other hand, you can make very light marks, you can make darker marks. It all just depends on what the situation calls for. So must have pencil and Sharpie and just understand that the, the uh, situation that you're in while using either one of them um, is important to note because you don't want to ruin a product with a Sharpie. 
In my main compartment, that's it, other than a uh, some screwdriver and also I forgot my cat's claw. This is called a cat's claw. Um, it's got two ends here. You can kind of see. This is used if I'm uh, if you're working around a framing uh, lumber. So just basic two by fours, any any kind of sort of framed um, house or anything like that. That maybe you need to get the nails out of a board that's already joined. And I'll I'll show a video how to use this um, later. But basically, I can take either end depending on the position that I'm in and I can drive this under and I can pry the head of the uh, nail up and this is going to allow me to get it um, out of the, the wood a lot easier uh, than, than you know you otherwise would be able to. So this is called, a, typically I call it a cat's claw uh, and that's a really great tool to have if you're going to be working around um, a lot of framing stuff or if you're going to be tackling a framing job and maybe make a mistake or something like that. Uh, on the back side here, to kind of round this out, I do have the most, what it should be the most identifiable and common tool ever, the hammer. This is a basic uh, tw 20 ounce hammer. I got this thing for free at Lowe's like forever ago when I bought something else. Um, that's really the only reason I have this one. There's actually, I keep, I have a different hammer in my, uh, work bag that I, that I prefer, um, but really, it, they, all, they all work great. This is a solid steel hammer, smooth face, um, claw hammer. So what this is gonna allow me to do is I, I can drive nails, I can drive fasteners, I can drive electrical staples, um, I can just beat on, beat on things I need to beat on. I can do that with this. Uh, and then you got your claw here. This is gonna allow you to pull nails out of uh, lumber. This is going to uh, allow you to kind of get under a, a piece of lumber or an object and kind of pry on it and, and maybe lift it up uh, to help you get it level or um, you know to literally use it to pry something off. Maybe a piece of trim that you don't need to save and you're not worried about damaging too much and kind of just get it in there and pry it off. Um, again, every tool needs to be, you need to think about what you're doing before you use a certain tool. A hammer inherently is meant to hit things. It's meant to in some way damage things. So if you're working on a finished product, you're working on finished trim and you're using a hammer, you need to be gentle. You also need, might not need a 20 ounce hammer. They make smaller ones. They make 12 and 16s and things like that. Um, another note is if you go to Home Depot, they make lots of different hammers. They make different claws, they make different faces, and I'm going to make a whole video about that. But the important thing to note is you're going to find some hammers that have a textured facing on the head here. That is a framing hammer. That is totally great if you're going to be doing using it for framing. What I mean by framing is you're working with raw two by fours and two by sixes and lumber that's not for finished products. Um, you can nail it together. The idea of the texture is that it's supposed to uh, provide less slip on the head of the nail or the staple and whatnot. Um, and they have, usually have a little bit longer handle so you can get a little bit more leverage on your swing with it. The thing about those is they will absolutely damage the a finished product. So if you have a finished piece of wood and you go tapping on a, a nail onto that and that facing makes any kind of contact, you're going to scrape it up, you're going to damage the, that finished product. So you never want to use a framing hammer for anything finished. It literally needs to stay for framing and framing only. That's, my, that's how I like to view things. Every uh, job and situation might call for a different tool, but you need, to, you need to always try to know what that right tool is. Not all tools. Uh, are you know one size fit all. After that, we get into the basic impact and drill. Now, many moons ago, when the drills first came out, this was all that there was. You would use this. You put a, a, a Phillips head uh, or a hex head bit in here. And you use it for uh, fastening things. Uh, or you would put a drill bit in here that you would use to make holes in things, and uh, that's that's what this is designed for. It can do it can do both. Uh, it has a varial speeds. Um, it even has a, what we call a chuck 
Uh, so you can set the, the different numbers and it's basically at a certain amount of force, it's gonna, it's just gonna, the chuck is gonna break, like break connection and just spin without moving the actual fastener so you don't over tighten and damage something. Um, to keep things super simple, you just will, in order to operate it, you typically have these little, this little switch here. If my pointer finger is on that switch and it's pushed in, that means it's in tightening mode. If my thumb is pushed, is, is on the switch and it's pushed in, that means I'm in loosening mode. So if I hold this chuck here and I'm in reverse, it's gonna open up the bit holder and that's gonna make my bit fall out or allow me to put a new bit in. Um, so this is just a basic drill. Everybody should have a basic drill. These are super handy and it, it, it makes doing things where you have a lot of fastening much faster, much easier. Now, impacts. It's becoming completely standard that everybody has impact drivers these days. Uh, impact drivers are absolutely awesome. What uh, makes an impact different than a basic drill is it still spins. Um, just like a standard drill wheel. Um, but first is they pretty much all have a quick release bit holder um, because they're gonna, they're gonna use a standard bit um, for everything. Um, you're gonna put Phillips, flathead, hex head, things like that in here, uh, you know, Torx heads, things like that. Um, but this is also, well, it has a, like a percussion to it. So as you are driving on something and it starts to uh, experience a lot of resistance, while it's spinning, it's actually almost kind of hammering at the same time. Um, so it's creating a lot of force and uh, it, it, they're just awesome. That's, uh, there's just no other way to say it. They're very powerful. Some of the new ones have uh, like speed adjustments and force adjustments. Um, this one doesn't, it's a little bit older Milwaukee. Um, the, the newer ones that we have on the van, they do have that, so that's kind of nice. But uh, the, 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 note, the thing to note with this is you need, you need to understand trigger force. So don't get trigger happy. You can't just pull the trigger and go flat out. You need to uh, you know, start slow. Um, same thing with a regular drill. Anytime you're fastening anything or drilling a hole, you need to, you know, generally speaking, you need to you know, start slow, make sure you understand the product and the, the hardware that you're using so that you don't over tighten and destroy anything. Uh, lastly, guys, I have some cases of bits. I, this is, I mean, this is crucial. So uh, outside of the general hand tools, we have, um, it, you know, if you have a drill and a, an impact, you're going to need a, 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 a bit sets. You're just gonna have to. So there's a lot of basic bit sets out there. Again, my stuff's Milwaukee for the most part. Um, but these are gonna have things like Allen heads. Um, I'm, don't worry about the specifics, but Allen heads, uh, hex heads, different um, socket attachments, extensions. Uh, this one has uh, Phillips and flat head and star head and square head. Um, this is where you kind of get into more of the ability to drive uh, different specialty fattener, fasteners and you want to, uh, you, you never want to get caught not being able to do so. Now, the, they sell all of these things. They even sell little packs individually of like just one type of fastener, of a, a bit. Uh, it's super common, like a, 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 a P2 Phillips bit is super common. Um, so you can just buy sets of those. Um, but I, I like having a, a variety of stuff because I just never know what I'm going to come across. Uh, and then with that is the is a set of just standard metal drill bits. These are metal drill bits. They make drill bits that are, are for wood, for metal. Um, this is just a basic, I can use these for whatever, if I needed to, just like a small little hole or whatnot. Um, but I would typically use these for metal or in plastic. Uh, and and these, are, these are just um, an absolute must have if you think you're going to need to make a hole in something. Um, they come in all different sizes, super small or super big. You would basically loosen your chuck and you'd get it in your drill like so. So these, again, must-haves. Um, they make really high quality ones. They make ones a little bit cheaper. Things to note with these sorts of things. These can break, they can shear off. If you're coming in at an angle on something, you're not keeping your drill straight, um, they, they can present a safety hazard. So uh, always make sure you're wearing proper safety stuff when you're doing any of this, but definitely uh, make note that these sorts of things can break and you don't want that coming back into your face. 
Uh, for the, for the most part, guys, that is everything that I keep on this bag. I keep some mini screwdrivers, things that you would find uh, that you would use to work on like electronics or fix a pair of glasses. Um, and I have electrical tape here. Um, but that's, for the most part, it. Uh, again, this is my home bag, so I can, uh, I can always access all of my other tools that I have out of my actual toolboxes. Um, but this is what I typically will need if I'm gonna grab and go, fix something in the house, or go help a friend and fix something for them. I hope this is clarifying. I hope this is a good introduction and a good jumping off of video for me to start sharing with you guys kind of the more specifics, why you use a certain uh, uh, tool, how you use it, the, you know, all the circumstances in which you may find yourself, um, and then also help, helping you just kind of set up the ideal at-home bag. Um, this is, again, this is what I would recommend for anybody. If you're going to own a home or even if you have an apartment and you just generally might need to take care of something, it just really works out to, be, to have some, um, these things. So that's it for today, guys. Much love to you. Well, thank you, thank you for, for coming in and, and spending time with me on Effort Let's Create. Uh, this is so exciting for me, and I'm, 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 I'm new to this, and I'm, I uh, hope that this is uh, you know, coming off as, in, uh, as informative and helpful, and I'm going to keep getting better and keep working at it. So much love to you guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, if you like what I'm doing, if you would like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Follow me at Kevin.Kiss on Instagram. And uh, I'm, we're going to keep doing cool stuff. And I, I hope that I can be helpful. So much love to you guys. Have a wonderful day. Peace.